I'm Baratunde Thurston, and this is Clarify, the show focused on the issues that matter to you most this election. Mike and Spotify have teamed up to break down the issues and break through the rhetoric to bring you the facts. We've been joined by policy experts, journalists, and musicians throughout the season. Today, we're tackling gender equality. I'll sit down with musician Santagold a bit later in the show. But first, Mike's senior editor, Samita Mukopadai, breaks down the issues surrounding gender equality. All right, folks, I'm here with Samita Mukopadai, senior editor for culture and identities at Mike. What's up, Samita? Good to see you again. You too. And we are going to talk about some real light subject matter, real easy stuff, gender equality mm. or the lack thereof. So I want to start with some definitions because you hear, I hear these terms gender inequality, usually in relation to a pay gap or maternal leave or access to abortion or catcalling or like who gets paid what in a Hollywood film. How do you think about gender equality and inequality in the U.S.? What is captured in that category? Uh, absolutely. I think all of the things you list okay. are included in that. But more broadly, gender equality is really as simple as equality between the genders, right? It's about... Is it that simple? Yes. <laughs> Why can't we just make it happen? Yeah, all right. Solved. Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, it's the idea that no matter who you are or how you kind of express yourself um, based on your, you know, how you express your gender, you deserve equal access to everything. And whether that be paid the same as your male counterpart at work or, um, you know, having the safety of going to, you know, walking home at night, you know, whatever that might be that you're not kind of discriminated against based on your gender. What is on your list of things that you've seen working mm -hmm. that help create more equality between the genders, mm -hmm. especially on this topic of compensation? <clears throat> So I think in terms of compensation, it's really training around unconscious bias. It's both training women on the art of negotiation and how mm. to kind of advocate for yourself. Ultimately, it's going to take people that are in power recognizing that they're in power and, and being ready to actually give up, not even just give up their own spots, but be like, yes, I am going to acknowledge that in, at my company, women are getting paid less across the board and I'm going to do something about that. And I think those, those are the moments when people, allies, male allies stand up and actually m take efforts towards redistributing wealth, that's when you actually see real change. This caretaking role that women tend to take on more so than men, you mentioned this comes at a cost. Mm -hmm. What is going on to compensate for that use of time in terms of medical leave, family medical leave for taking care of a sick parent or a new child or a new sick child or an old sick parent, like a yeah. lot of combinations, but in terms of family care and compensation, where do we stand? Yeah, so the United States is one of the lowest ranking countries of the modern world in terms of access to parental leave policies. I think the World Economic Forum, we're um, definitely, I think we're 28th in okay. the world okay. in terms of the gender equality gap, which is a variety of factors. It's government representation, it's pay gap, mm. it's literacy rates, it's access to reproductive health care. Um, so that's incredibly low. Some countries that fall above us include Burundi, Sounds South kind of Africa, like Sunday. yeah, like yeah. <laughs> oh, Burundi, <laughs> Mozambique, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So countries that may not be considered part of the Western or developing world yeah. um, actually have better policies for for working mothers than the United States does. Why? Why do you think that is? I think we haven't had universal legislation that okay. demands that companies be accountable to parental leave policies, um, which is why that is one of the most important issues in this election. Mm. I think that the fact that there are so many families that have to choose between work and a sick family member yeah. is outrageous. In this country, we tend to prize work a lot yeah. over at the expense of quality of life. And when you describe you know, the childbirth process or a sick family member and the time off of work that someone would have to take, I can see an employer saying, well, look, I feel bad yeah. that your mom is sick or that you have to recover from this childbirth, but we got to ship these widgets. Like yep. they're not going to sell yep. themselves. The fourth quarter is coming around the bend and global competition. And we have all kinds of, you know, different pressures on our business model. So why should I as an employer have to account for this kind of non-employer related activity going on in your life? Like I sympathize with you as a person, but as a business person, what am I supposed to do? Where does family medical leave policy fit into yeah. that frame of mind. We live in a time where you are expected to work around the clock to be successful at your job. You know, I manage a team and it's true. The people that work more are on my radar more and they are rewarded more for that. Mm -hmm. And and I think that we 
as a generation have an opportunity to really think about that. Actually, I noticed that a lot of my women friends are delaying childbirth because they um, are delaying starting a family because they're focused on their career. And we are not in a place where you can kind of do both successfully without literally killing yourself, right? Yeah. And um, I know there was, you know, Sheryl Sandberg's kind of famous book, Lean In, where you know she really argued that women can have it all and you can kind of negotiate and figure out how to have um, work-life balance and have that family. That's actually not really possible in for, for most women mm. you know there might be an elite group of women who have access to childcare and access to other resources that will support them in being incredibly successful in their career and also being able to raise the fam a family the average working mother cannot do that absolutely cannot this will come across as a strange question <laughs> go for it <laughs> why do we want gender equality like is inequality bad so I think there's there's actually there's the social kind of cultural responsibility that we should want equality between different people. Um, I think that that is one very solid argument in terms of just if 50% of the population is not performing at the same level as the other half and there are systemic and kind of institutional problems that are holding them back, that's something we can change. That's something we can make better. Um, but there's also a financial question here. If you have 50% of the population that's not kind of you know, able to work at the same, you know, kind of participate in the economy in the same way. Think of how much money we're actually losing. Like sexism is expensive, right? If if women actually made as much as men, they would contribute more to the economy, right? They would be able to buy more products. They would be able to run more companies, which means that they would probably come up with products that other women want to buy. You know, there's all these kind of like economic reasons, which I find is sometimes easier to argue yeah. because so people don't always get the moral or ethical argument about equality. So then you're like, all right, well, if I can't you know, if you're not going to hear me on that, then like at least hear the financial argument. At what exact uh, date and year will we have perfect gender equality in the United States? Oh God, I think of, what, what is it like 150 years from now or something? It's not, yeah. Okay, 150. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not happening in our lifetimes. <laughs> have you seen movement in your own lifetime? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I have, again, you know, I think looking at class differences is really important here. Um, women, working class women are actually, and specifically African American women, are out earning their male counterparts by at, not just out earning, but going to college at higher rates, graduating college at higher rates. Out learning. Out learning. But I also think, you know, this is not just about like women winning, right? This is about us actually interrogating, you know, the differences, the way that we are taught we have to behave based on how we express our gender. And I think that hurts men as well. I think the fact that women are overperforming and outperforming in schools is also in part due to um, men are struggling a little bit right now and 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 specifically and it's been a lot very much in college and there's been a lot of like alarmist um, kind of writing about this how it's like oh see what happens when you give women equality like men start to suffer and it's like well if the very basic you know your notion of self is based on like women being less than you you know we, you really need to you need to look at the mirror <laughs> you need to look in the mirror and the and, man in the mirror right <laughs> exactly <laughs> nailed it <laughs> 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 uh, you know, and, and when we think about equality, it's not just about I earn exactly the same as you. You know, it's really about this kind of vibrant conversation about the different qualities and talents that we bring and putting ourselves in positions that enhance those the best. And sometimes that may be, you know, that the, we're learning that you know, and it could be biological, it could be the way that women are raised, often they're better at jobs where they require a lot of communication, whereas, you know, men be, might be better at certain jobs. And I think it's really just recognizing people for their individual kind of contributions and what they're good at and what they're not good at and giving them the support they need to kind of function in this new economy. Because I think a lot of people assume that, oh, you're a feminist or you believe in gender equality and that means like, I want to see men suffer. Yeah. I do want to see some of my exes suffer, it's true. <laughs> okay, thank you for your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, I, I, I think that it's it's about having, it's, it's very much about having a conversation yeah. across gender lines. I think that we are, you know, things are changing, but they're not ultimately going to change if people are afraid of what a world where women are fully empowered and, you know, have equal access to the same things that men have access to. If we're afraid of that world, yeah. then that's not going to be a successful kind of world of gender equality. Mm -hmm.